I like to travel. I like to go to new places. I'm always drawn to Baja. I mean, when, when they get rolling, it's basically a fish per bait. We're gonna look for them on the surface, hopefully feeding on bait balls. Oh, dude, that is Nat Geo! This trip in particular is gonna be the furthest southern zone I've made it to in Baja. Look at that! Oh, right here off the side. Okay, this one. We came here at a certain time, at a certain date, for a reason. Oh, no. oh. Oh my god, I'm so dope! The other species that I come down here to chase is one that really eluded me for a long time. Nice, Rutchie. Woo! Woo my name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you. What you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. So what are they doing here, Chris? Are we, we're gonna back the truck in right here and drive up on it? Yeah, we'll drive the boat up on it, hitch it up, and then ride across the dunes and dunk it back in the Pacific side of Santa Marina Bay. Do we need to get out, or are we just going to ride in the boat? No, we're going to take the Baja sleigh ride. So when you're in a remote destination, all you have is each other. Fishermen have to help each other. Guys that live here at the, at the town of Puerto Magdalena, and he basically, this is his job, he just crosses guys back and forth. So these guys don't work for you, they're just guys? They, they're fishermen themselves? Correct. This is one of the narrower parts of the island, so we can drive across it. There's some sand dunes that start up here, but the, the island itself is about, about 40 miles long. These guys are some of the most resourceful fixers you've ever seen in your life. If there's a will, there's a way. If you need to get across the peninsula to get out, well, there's a guy with a truck. He's going to come pick you up, put you on a ponga, and you're on a sleigh ride across the peninsula to the other side to cut an hour off your run. So Colleen's got some bait for us on the boat, right? Got a little head start on that. That same spirit is the entire spirit of Baja. And this is a place where everybody has to get together, you know, and everybody supports everybody. Once you get down here, once you kind of figure it out, once you make some friends, you get bitten, it's in your blood, you feel completely comfortable, and you can't wait for the next adventure. All right, so we're gonna throw the lures in? Sure. Try and troll them up instead? Yeah, we'll try to get some on the troll, maybe pitch back to them. And so that happens. bait ball thing's a little later in the day usually? Yeah, you'll start marking bait down 100, 150 feet, and you start to see the birds, you give it some time, and the marlin will drive the bait ball up, and then the, the show will start in the afternoon. SoCal style, locate them with the jigs for now. Same spread. Worked yesterday, might as well do it again. Sometimes those marlin are feeding deep or they haven't corralled the bait. So that's when you go to the other way of fishing these. You know, there's the visual aspect where you're chasing them under the birds, but then the other way to find them is either trolling lures with hooks in them or trolling teasers or spreader bars without hooks in them and then switching them over to bait. Now, are we in that same zone as yesterday, Chris? We're in the same spot we got the troll fish in yesterday, so we'll, we'll start looking here. We got good, good water, good temps, and there's a few frigates working already, so we'll give it a shot. Now, do you, is that what you like to do? You find them in one spot, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to the same zone the next day, start there, gives you a starting point. Those baits attract everything. Tuna, wahoo, marlin. There we are. Wahoo! Oh my gosh. Yeah, double. Doble. I don't think this is a marlin. That was on the Mad Scad, wasn't it? Yeah, no, These I might be little might, tunas. Might be little tunas or maybe a who. Skippy. Skip chock. Skippy. How did you eat that lure? Do I keep these guys, a, Chris? Is that what they made for lunch for us, Chris? Save them for grouper bait. Is this the white meat ones? No, but well, they're lighter. They're like they're like yellowfin. Cow cow is the white meat one. Yeah. Have you ever caught those in the pies? I uh, never caught no, them. I got them here. 
I oh, think that's have. it. Huh? That is cow cow? I think so. Seriously. They're supposed to be delicious. They're right? lighter. They're a lot they're like more like a yellowfin. Save these, Chris? Yep. Or use them for bait? Oh yeah, every everybody eats. Look at that. Look at the sun. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot, fastest, cleanest, smartest, the only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design. Crafted by experience and by BDOutdoors.com. There he is, there he is, there he is. Court rigger. About to snap it out. Long rigger, short. Short. Long, short. Right, you're there on the is, wall. Got him? Got him. A lot of times when you do find these striped marlin, you're finding packs of them. There's very few times where I saw a single fish. Look at him, oh, nice is. little guy. Oh, he's not that little. Not that little, no. Well, that didn't take long. Now, do you find when it gets a little rougher, they'll get a little more acrobatic? I haven't noticed them being any different. When you hook a blue marlin, for instance, or a black marlin, you know, or even a swordfish, there's generally one fish around. You don't really run into packs in most cases, you know, of a blue of blue marlin or a black marlin. Chris, you have one great fishery down here, buddy. Got a few marlin, that's for sure. Look at this thing. Look how lit up he is. Jesus, Look at those colors, so sick, so sick. Oh, top of the bill. Look at he that. is lit up. He is. This is the most lit one we've caught, man. Now that's that what you see on like that blue planet when they're all lit up chasing that thing. It's all. Look at the wings are still lit up. The packs. I mean, that's what you always see like back behind the boat. The brightest part. I can do this all day long. A little short guy. Yeah. Uh, Perfect size. Get warmed up on. Yeah. You know, let's go ahead and let this dude go. Uh, get another one. I think he's gonna be okay. Striped marlin, much like sailfish, are gonna run in packs, and that presents the opportunity to hook multiple fish. Oh, got a fish up on the rigger. Already? Yeah, he's on he it. Is. All right. Jeez. You need to get all the rods out. I right. guess we're in the zone. Oh, he's right behind us. Throw the bait out. Throw the bait out. He's chasing the lure around. I lost my bait. Tease him with that thing. I am. Still there? Yeah, he's right behind it. Just like any fishery, you know, you get one on and then there's five more behind the boat. <laughs> it's pretty much control chaos. He's right behind this lure, I'll leave here. I don't see him right here? Really 10 feet behind my, my lure. There he is, he's on your bait. He's on your bait. Right way. He's hot. He's on, there's another he one. He inhaled it. No, he didn't. Turn off of it? I don't know, my There's another one right here, you got another fish bait? Ah, uh, there's a hook bait, but it's not. They don't want the bait. You know, everybody's reaching for a rod. Everybody's trying to get a bait in the water, hook a fish. You got all your over, under, and moving around the boat, maneuvering the boat. Look at him laid up on the match cat. He ate it, he ate, he ate, he ate, he ate. Three. 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 Or did he knock me off? There's three of them no, back he, there. Dude, this guy's missed this thing three times. He missed it again? Are you kidding me? No, I'm bit. You got him. I got him there on the is. Cast. Nice! Oh, I just pulled. Oh, Farmer John. Oh, it's so sick. There's one on it. Let me come you underneath want... you. Look at him go. This fishing sucks, Chris. There were three of them back there lit up, just following the boat. Yeah, they were all Look rude. at them all behind us with the porpoise. Right in front, look at him follow the mad guy right up behind the boat. Look at this one lit up. He's not eating it though, huh? Pin a bait on Rush if he doesn't Hold want to on. eat it. Uh, that's the fun of this fishery. I mean, you could instantly go from moment to doldrum to 
total chaos. He's fighting like a blue. You got a jumper, huh? Yeah. Bait fish. Hadn't, hadn't, I know, it's always a difference. It's not even slowed down. Now he's coming at the boat, still on. Oh, what a jump! What a fishery. So much fun, man. I love catching these things. I love hooking these things. <laughs> this pulling part. I love just seeing them, man. I know. Just swimming like that, free swimming, tails out of the water. This guy's digging, huh? Uh, yeah. Bust them off. Hey, Shave through. I, I think we call that a release. Good job, that was man. Awesome. That was awesome. All those fish behind the boat. How many were back there? Three or four? It's just going. So, so they look cool. like like blue snakes or something, you know? So we're just gonna troll around these shark buoys for a minute, see if anybody's home. Yeah, we'll hit the shark buoys. It's really the only structure we got out here until we get to the bank. We came here at a certain time, at a certain date, for a reason. Hey. Hey. Yeah. That's the right guy. I look like a who. A who. The other species that I come down here to chase is one that really eluded me for a long time. For as much blue water fishing as I've done over the years, wahoo have sort of been my nemesis. Yeah, it really feels like a wahoo. Fortunately for me, coming to Mag Bay, fishing with Chris, we've, uh, we've handled that nemesis. Hi, Srachi. Woo! Wahoo! Never gets old, does it? That didn't take long, huh, Rush? Oh, what was that? Put them out. Let's just try for a little bit in open water. Maybe the wahoo fishing will be as good as the marlin fishing. Well, we're coming up on the moon, so you know what that means. We got everything stacked. Yeah, man. I'm what stoked. a pretty fish. Most fishermen agree that a full moon can be some of the hardest fishing that you can have. Luckily, wahoo bite on the full moon. They love the full moon, and they stack up on the banks. So, Chris, when you're trying to catch wahoo, what are the key factors? I know we talked about tide. Moon. Or spread, moon, moon's a big one. Moon's a big one. You want a full or a new moon. OK. And what are you looking for on the water or in the area that you're fishing? Um, usually structure. I like to fish, you know, Thetis Bank. Any of the banks um, is, is my favorite. But right now, we're running some buoys, those shark buoy lines, headed yeah. out to the bank. Yeah. We got a little bit of rough water, but it, we're right on the slack tide, which okay. is also another factor that's, so, that's very important. So the shark buoys are your structure out here, essentially, exactly. right? Yes. OK. Like with a lot of fisheries that people are unsure of, there's a lot of theories that float around. The fish are congregating because of the moon, because of the certain currents that are starting to form because of the moon. It could be a feeding thing. Maybe some of them feed it. Maybe these fish are congregating to feed at night and work just like the marlin do, maybe in packs. One thing's for sure, I've seen firsthand that these fish congregate around the moon. Duh. There you go. That's it. That's, that's, that's shaky, shaky. That's, that's our guy right there. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh my God, that was so good. That was so awesome. Oh, that was so bar. sweet. That was so cool. Oh, you didn't get the hook, though. You OK with that long nomad out there, uh, Rutch? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Looks like a decent one. Look how neon he is down there. Look oh. how all lit up. You know you what they were? dorsal fin. They remind me of a striped marlin. That's a pretty good one. Without the wings, you know? Yeah. Oh, watch out. Service with a smile. Get him in. You had tension on the spool for a second. <laughs> Woo! That's a nice skin right there. I'm going to let you grab that one since I did such a poor job with the last one. <laughs> You've got so much more experience, though. <laughs> I know you love them, but man, for me, it's just such a treat to get to catch them, you know? Yeah. This is your backyard fish. For me, it's really special occasion type thing. That's a real unit there, huh? Nice one. That is cool. Such awesome predators. They're just rocket ships, man. Such good sashimi, too. Yeah, in Spanish, they call them pezcuete. That means firecracker fish. Pretty I can appropriate. See why. I can see why. You know, pretty appropriate.
Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, Aftco, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. We're going to do some bottom fishing for what we call this Takuda, which is actually a snowy grouper. And I think you've, you've caught a few of those. I'm very familiar with snowy grouper. We caught quite a few back home. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to bottom fish in about 320 feet. I've caught my share of grouper in my time. Jigs, live bait? Both. Okay. I'd never it. caught him until a few years ago, and then I showed Russia pictures. Like, dude, that's a snowy. To be able to come over to this coast and see the different grouper and catch these different grouper that these zones offer. And I'm surprised you guys catch them this shallow. See, I don't catch them this shallow. How deep do you have to fish? 500s minimum. I really like seeing these different fish. Now, what's the Mexican name for them? Estacudo. Estacudo. Yes, that means slimy, big-headed grouper with white spots on the side. That pretty much describes it. Yes, sir. Me and Rush talk about it all the time. We had our druthers. We would probably fish for tuna grouper and swordfish on every single show. Estacuda. Nice. Well, that's a start. That is just like our snowy. Is it? Yeah. He's a little guy. Little snowflakes, and the smaller they are, the more snowflakes show up, the more vibrant they are. Pelagics will always be my favorite, but I do have a special place in my heart for the bottom fish, grouper especially. It's great to eat, fun to catch, and we get some big fish. Uh, that's a grouper bite. See? Oh, oh see. Oh, the grunt, the grunt. Oh, the sand bass, the sand bass. He doesn't feel huge, but come on. Give you a little elevator ride here. Not a bad morning. Wahoo, <laughs> Bonita. Grouper. Grouper. A little bigger. There we go. That's the guy right there, dude. That's not a bad one at all, dude. Nice work. See, you were wondering about those grunts earlier. I told you it worked. Silver, shiny, wiggly. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes okay, the grouper will eat him. Grouper bait? Oh, I barely got him. Got to be the same fish. I mean, got, got, got split by a continental shelf. At least the cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a saying here when we catch grouper, it's over the rail and into the pail. <laughs> You're saying you want this guy? Yes, sir. You know, people come here for a lot of different reasons. For me, I love grouper fishing. This is one of the best zones on the planet to catch big grouper. There's a better one. You got one, Rush? Yeah, that's a better one. Oh, oh wait, mine's acting that's like a real. Line? That's a real one. Get him, Rush. Let's just totally discount my little fish I got on here and let's all see what Rush is doing. <laughs> big bait, big fish, right? Got some weight, it's like, just like dead weight right now. Estacudo, they fight really good for the first 50 feet. <sighs> Looks like you got one. I got, think I have Diablito. El Diablo. You want all these we can get? We need some fish tacos for dinner. I'm a fan of fish tacos, Chris. This is really a cool fish, man. Chris, look at the angle. See how he's starting to float? Come up. That's how you know it's a real one. He's going to float up way out there. Don't show me up, Rutch. You need some gaff action on this giant? No, nah, I see him right there. <laughs> oh, nice fish. Look at that. That is a nice one. That's the one. That's a real one. See the air coming out behind him? Look at that, dude. Nice. That's what we're talking about, right? Wow. It's wow. all about the bait, boys. All about the bait. Dude, that's a good one. That's a nice fish. <laughs> that's what I'm accustomed to back home. Oh, look at that. So cool, dude. So rad. Oh, I'm stoked, man. I've been telling you about it. I showed you pictures, and you got it done. Now, this one's got a lot of black spots on it. God, that is a stud. Look at that. Awesome. I mean, so far we've caught marlin, grouper, I mean, Oahu, we got the slam. Why stop now? <laughs>
Dude, give me a Dude, that was a stud, man. I'm so glad you got one after seeing those pictures and stuff. Such a familiar fish for me, but never gets old. And to come over here, all the way across the country. Other side of the world. All the way down here in Baja. And so, catch a fish so similar back home. It's just, it makes you wonder, you know, how many fish we have that are similar. And like I said, man, guys where I'm from, I, most people don't even know what that is. I didn't know what it was until five years ago I caught my first one. Five years ago, if you would have asked me about the Baja Peninsula, I couldn't even tell you a thing. You know, I knew they had some great fishing over here. I knew it was the Pacific, but I was very uneducated. I've really earned a huge respect for the Mexican people. It's really a unique place with so many different faces, facets, nooks, crannies. That's why I keep coming back.